Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good trading week. We'll obviously uh, tackle that in a few minutes. Uh, you know, this is coming up the week of Thanksgiving, okay? At the end of the day, uh, this is what we need to be thankful for. As much as certain people like to click the mouse and all that good stuff and the love affair of trading and all that comes with it, uh, at the end of the day, it's all about family. It's all about love. It's all about being with the people that are most important in your life. Uh, because at the end of the day, what's the point of doing any of this, right? If it's not uh, all for them. So this is coming up to a uh, shortened week, biggest travel day uh, of the year, travel week of the year. Um, Thanksgiving, we are closed as a Friday session. Uh, that's going to be half. Most people are going to be gone. Uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are going to be a huge, huge travel day. So going into this week, expect a slower week. Okay, you're, you're not going to have these massive, massive ranges. And it's actually a perfect segue into what we just we saw last week. Um, but more important, just kind of understand what you are going to be potentially um, seeing this week. Okay, uh, this is the week that you don't want to, um, you know, take a stake in anything. You don't want to, you know, prove, you know, prove your uh, your manhood, your womanhood. This is the week to kind of see where the action flows. We'll again talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, understand what's happening and kind of move forward uh, because again, channels will contract. Um, bull market is intact, okay? And but there's a big but to it, okay? This is the first week that the S and P 500 closed down for the week. Now, before anybody goes nuts and says, "Well, what are you talking about? Who cares?" Right? You should care, okay? We'll talk about that uh, again in a second. Uh, if you look at all the indexes, you saw the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ 100 down about a half of a percent each. Not a big deal, okay? Uh, definitely not a big deal. You saw Fed come out this week, uh, talk about all future rate, hike, uh, future rate cuts are put on hold until there's a macro picture that's cleaner. Okay, we got that part. This is the first time, though, and this is again, this is where the butt comes in. This is the first time in many, many weeks that we closed below the five day moving average. Okay. And not only do we, do we do it once, we did it three times. And what I noticed on Wednesday's session was that this is the first time that any type of China news came out. Okay. And this is where, if you guys remember, uh, they talked about, um, you know, China said, well, we might not see a deal uh, until 2020, which again, it's only a couple months away, um, but they said that. And again, throughout the whole week, China, you know, you have China saying, well, we're not sure what's happening. And then you see Donald Trump talking about, well, we're, we're encouraged that a deal will get done. My question is, does China know that? Okay. So the, the sell-off that we saw on Wednesday, if you guys remember that sell-off before the Fed came, you know, the, the Dow went down about from up 30 to down 90. And the one thing that I noticed from that first move, right, we never rallied back. And that was the first time that I can remember in the last couple of months that we never rallied back. And that day, the Dow went, you know, the Dow went down, I forgot if it was, if it was 200 or 150, whatever it was. But the most important part was that the index is closed below the five day. Now, again, if you've been watching, uh, if you've been watching uh, just kind of the weekend update, forget about even the videos uh, throughout the week, but if you've been watching uh, me just on the weekends, you kind of know the importance of the five day moving average, the five day moving average. And again, you can look at uh, any chart, you can go literally any chart on your, in, on your own time and you'll notice the trend, the shortest term trend is the five day moving average. And again, not a lot of people um, really subscribe to this notion, but I do. I, I really truly believe this is incredibly important. So one time closing below the five, it's not a big deal. Okay. Cause if you look at any, any random part on the chart, on the cues, um, anytime they close below the five day, the next day they got through, right. They, they kind of reclaimed it. And what we saw on Wednesday with no really big bounce back, right. You can see they closed right below the five day. We started closing the five below the five day 
three days in a row. And, and that, again, that's a big deal. Okay. That's a big deal. It doesn't become a huge deal. Okay. Uh, until we lose this $200 level. And if you look at the cues of this whole big macro move, there's been monster protection, okay, monster demand on this 200 level. And if you look at the rising demand, okay, you'll see it perfectly here on 200. So again, it's not a big deal yet, okay? It's not a big deal yet. But again, do we really need to rally into the end of the year? We'd like to, right? There's, there's sure no materialistic evidence to tell us we shouldn't. But again, this is a big deal. It's not a huge deal yet, but it's a big deal. And we should really start paying attention because if any close, okay, any close now below uh, this 200 area, right? Any close below this 200 area. And again, this is not a point of discussion, okay? Technical analysis is not, you know, it, it's not a broad stroke. It's either, it's either happening or it's not. So it's not a point of an opinion and discussion. It's a materialistic fact. We close below this $200 level, and we're gonna drop down all the way down to 196. Again, it's not an opinion. This is the way stocks work. This is the way my whole theory of trading pivots works. They trade from channel to channel. And if you believe, and we've been, you know, we've been trading these pivots for years, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply, demand to demand, so if they lose this demand zone, we're gonna go all the way down to here. So it's, again, very, very important area. And what more important, what we started noticing was, you know, Monday and Tuesday, were fine. Okay, they were they were pretty pretty solid days. Wednesday was okay, and and the reason why Wednesday was okay, Wednesday was the first day prior to prior to that China news. Okay, we started seeing if you guys remember in the morning, we started seeing really really thin thin bids and offers, right? Especially names like Tesla and Netflix, right? Really really thin bids and wide wide spreads. And I noticed, I, I started trading um, Netflix. I think my first two trades of the day on, on Wednesday was Netflix. And what I noticed was the move from the sneaky pivots. I kept on missing the moves from the sneaky pivots because they were trading like 50, 60 cents spread wides with 100 share lots. And by the time that I actually got into the pivot, okay, around the 306 level, it was so thin that every single time it kept on spiking up 60, 70, 80 cents. The bids would just dry up and it would take like a Herculean effort just to get out of the trade because if, if you didn't get out of the trade, you know, break even or just try to make a little bit of money, it kept on stalling out. They kept on spreading you down two, three points. And I noticed the first time around, if I didn't sell Netflix, you know, with a cup of coffee gain the first time around because of the spreadiness, I noticed, well, first of all, they took down the stock three and a half points, which was very, very aggressive. And I noticed the second time around when they reclaimed that 306 level, when I got in again, they spiked it up again. And they, again, they confirmed the channel. It was super, super spready again. And again, I wound, I wound up taking a small profit as well. So, and I started looking at all the charts and the charts were fine. Uh, it was, again, the macro participation. I started seeing the same thing with, with Tesla. I started seeing the same thing, for example, uh, with NVIDIA. And then finally, NVIDIA kind of caught a bid and kind of saved my day. And that was that, if you guys remember, um, if you go back to Wednesday's session, that was that uh, sneaky area above that 209 level that really exploded the stock to 214. So that kind of saved the day. But that was the first day I kind of started seeing that there was just something wrong. Okay. And when you look, when I looked at the charts that day, and again, this is where a lot of you guys uh, will kind of agree with me, even if you don't trade with me, you kind of will agree with me that once that Wednesday session past or kind of in the middle of Wednesday session, we started seeing a huge divergence, okay? We started seeing a lot of strong names and a lot of weak names in the same group at the same time. And the market just kept on going up and down, up and down, up and down. Every single time the stock got stronger, they pulled it, okay? Every single time the stock got weaker, they brought it right back up. Again, I know this because I was trading Roku uh, on Thursday and it was just all over the place. Um, so I started seeing, you know, I started seeing more and more evidence that the market just didn't know what to do. Okay. And when the market just doesn't know what to do and they keep on building over and over again on the same level on the shortest point of, of, of reference, you want to start scaling back. The problem with that was we're all human beings, right? We're all human beings. So I, I did okay on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday came across and I knew this was all going on. And Thursday, I, I, I'll tell you this much. I usually trade between two to four, two to five trades a day. 
Okay, value, it's the same name as over and done. Tesla, again, you don't need to trade a lot of them to catch a really good move, as you guys know. By, by Thursday, okay, because the market was representing strength and weakness at the same time, and for whatever reason, my stupidity, okay, because again, I'm the king of the idiots and my humanity kicks in, it didn't dawn on me by like Thursday, because for some reason Wednesday didn't dawn on me, that we were still building below the five-day moving average. I kept on pushing and pushing and pushing. I wound up trading, no joke, people in the webinar thought I was lost my mind. I wound up trading, I put on nine or 10 trades by lunchtime, the same, same three stocks, Netflix, Tesla, and Roku, and I got nowhere. I got absolutely no, nowhere and I lost a little bit of money in the day. And the one thing that I kept on noticing over and over and over again, that one time, okay, it's a coincidence, second time, it's starting to be a trend, and going into Friday's session, I was a lot smarter. Okay, I was a lot smarter. I scaled back my activity and only waited for the valley. And actually, Friday turned out to be a pretty decent day. We'll talk about that in a second. But what I noticed more and more going forward in, into my career and kind of like passing on what we're seeing is any single time, guys, and again, the word chop, okay, it's not a coincidence. Um, the word chop, and again, everybody has different ways of trading. Everybody has... Uh, different ways of approaching the market and mind price. Because again, everybody, there's, there's day traders, there's swingers, there's scalpers. Uh, people trade different. So your time horizon is a lot different than mine. So for example, if I'm taking a short on Tesla and you love Tesla, again, I'm not talking to you, okay? You don't need to, you don't need to convince me that your stock in the next six years will be higher, okay? If I'm shorting Amazon, you, you don't need to try to convince me that I'm wrong, okay? Okay, you're... Your, your opinion versus my time horizon is night and day. It's like apples to hand grenades. It means absolutely nothing to me. So please, save. It doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, but what I notice, and I, and what I notice when people start talking about the word chop, the word chop is almost equal to the, to the word divergence, okay? And the chop happens when the macro universe doesn't know what it wants to do, especially when you're coming from a linear market that needs a desperate rest. Again, this is not an opinion. This is not speaking from a bearish point of view. I, I trade both sides of the market. I'm an equal opportunist, okay? But when you see the market coming off a linear, a linear move up, and that's exactly what we saw from October all the way to, and you can make a case all the way uh, to Tuesday, right? To last Tuesday, and it starts to kind of get heavy, and you see the stocks that led the brigade up, the apples, right? Uh, the Apples, the Netflixes, the, the Teslas of the world, when you start seeing them get tired, they're not resting, okay? They already had their moves. Again, look at, look at Apple's chart, right? Apple has just gone from 220, right? 220 to 268. It's not resting. It's tired. It desperately needs to pull back to certain levels. And again, if you see a visual, okay, just a visual, you kind of know, right? Everybody see this rising support? You kind of know where Apple needs to go just to kind of reset. Again, where it goes after the reset is a whole different story. It could hold and go back higher. It could, you know, it could start breaking down, but it needs a reset. So when you start looking at Apple and you start looking at Tesla, and again, Tesla might be a completely different thing. And by the way, okay, I love Tesla. Okay, everybody knows I love Tesla. I love trading Tesla, long, short. I love the car, right? I love the car. Everybody drives. I love Tesla. But that damn thing that they introduced Thursday, I'm sorry. That was hideous. That was hideous. The whole event was, was bombed. There was a cracked windshield. On the design alone, okay, I thought the stock could have been down 100. I mean, that it was the ugliest thing. It was like 30, 40 grand for this thing. Um, I, okay, I, I don't know if, if Elon Musk is smoking dust. And I love you, Elon. Okay, I love you, Elon. Don't go away. Keep doing what you're doing, baby. But boy, oh boy, that was on, he was on angel dust, whoever approved that, uh, that, <laughs> that design on Tesla. But, but again, the point is not what happened to Tesla. The point is kind of what was happening prior. You could see going into the vent, you could see this rounding top going on. So when you use, when you see the word chop, right, when you use the word chop, please understand it's not just affecting you, it's a, affecting the whole macro universe of stocks. And when you start seeing that, guys, the last thing you want to do is keep pushing, you keep pushing, keep pushing. And there's no more evident group on these beta names because usually beta trades as a tribe. When Facebook is strong, that means Amazon is strong, that means Netflix is strong, that means Tesla is strong, and Facebook and Apple and everything else. 
when the Apple gets weak and Netflix gets weak, but Alibaba gets strong and Facebook gets strong and Amazon's all over the place, which by the way, it really needs to start waking up soon. Uh, and it actually could, we'll get to that in a second. But the point is when you start seeing a big disconnect in these stocks and these stocks represent speculation money, okay, you are going to fall into the chop. So when you look at the final scoreboard at the end of the week and you notice that, well, the S&P slipped the first time in six weeks and you know everything was down about a half a percent and you turn around and say, who cares, right? It's just the rest. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But again, we're not in the guessing business. We're waiting for more evidence. So kind of understanding that information going into this week that we are now three days below the five day, two days now below the 10, and there's a very, very strong possibility. Again, we could slide down gracefully. Nobody's even going to notice uh, into the rise in support. Or we could get another aggressive pull and could start another magnificent wash into uh, this 196, uh, uh, 196 area. Again, before we put the cart in front of the horse, we need to understand, let it happen. Right? Let the market dictate that this, this is actually happening instead of forecasting and jumping in the gun and losing control of ourselves and start trading price action that's not there. So going into this new week, understand it's a short week. Most traders are going to be off. The traders there are going to be to trading. Remember going into last week, right? Remember this, this past week, choppy, 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 disconnect, 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 right? It's not going to get better. It's only going to magnify when there's going to be smaller value and less participants. So yes, is there going to be value going into this week? Absolutely. We are still, quote unquote, in a bull market. Again, I don't believe the word bull and bear exists. I only see value. Okay, that's the, that's for me. I only see value and I trade on value. There's no value. I'm going to scale back. Like on Thursday, I was all over the place. Right? I traded 9, 10 stocks, uh, 9, 10 uh, times, same three stocks, and I got nowhere. Okay, I traded Friday under control. I traded Roku twice, once to the short side, once to the long side, got some good value, Okay, and kind of rode off to the sunset, kind of uh, to decompress. But the most important part is understand that we are human, we're all going to mess up. But when you see choppiness and disconnect, that's the time to scale back, not to uh, try to make your uh, week or make your month or whatever the case may be. So let's talk about Friday. Okay. There was actually pretty good value. Okay. There was actually pretty good value. We had to wait for it. You really had to wait for it. And if you look at Friday's session, uh, a couple of things happened. Number one, Again, we don't care which way the pivot's going to go. We had a pivot to the short side on Disney. We had a pivot to the long side on Disney. One of them confirmed. Can you guess which one confirmed? Right. So again, we're not biased. We don't care about you know we don't care about what's going on. Um, but again, the most important thing is to wait, not to anticipate, not to put on your money uh, ahead of the pivot, ahead of the confirmation. Just wait. So Disney, right? So Disney, uh, two days in a row couldn't rally. Kept on holding that 146 area. Obviously, not got, didn't get there. We'll talk about the pivot to the upside, which is a really good one. Uh, Netflix got hit again pre-market, and Netflix uh, was a very was was pretty good action this week. We caught that really good move uh, from that 306 area when it exploded. Okay, we caught that move in the middle of the week, but then towards the end of the week, it got a little choppy. Um, so the market got you know the market swept. The market really started hitting the stock pre-market, uh, and again, was it because of Disney again? Probably, but how many times, and again, th this was actually answered, how many times can Netflix go down on the same news, right? And the one thing that Netflix did was, and, and th again, the news was, I don't see any news, watch possible, read the green for experienced traders, note that this is not a uh, pivot, only momentum obviously needs to reclaim um, uh, 313. So what I like, what I saw about Netflix, and this is kind of what I like going into this new week, it reclaimed, it went down to like 304, right? It went down to like 304. What I liked what it did was it reclaimed the earnings hot. If you guys remember, it reclaimed the earnings hot from the previous day. That's where it broke out from 309 to the 313 area. Um, I like that it reclaimed that it, the, the buyers completely engulfed that Disney news, the potential Disney news, subscribers, all that stuff. And it, it closed up not only above the five day moving average, it closed above the earnings highs. So I still like earn, I still like Netflix going into this week. I think if it starts reclaiming this 313 area, I, I think there's a shot, man. As long as the market doesn't implode, I think there's a punch of shot. This thing gets to 320. So we're definitely gonna be watching uh, Netflix this week. Uh, Facebook, tons of call buyers, right? Tons of call buyers. We saw this whole week. Uh, we saw the 200s, the 205s, the 207 and a halves. Uh, going into the next year, we saw the 220. Somebody's very, very 
uh, bullish into Facebook. And again, you could see the Facebook chart. Again, didn't trigger, obviously, but you can see how important this whole 220 level is. Any any close, excuse me, any close over 200, uh, it should start moving higher. So again, very very good price action on certain names. You could again, anytime a stock, for example, like Netflix negates bad news and negates the same headline over and over and over, it means the sellers are tired. It means the buyers are in control. So all it needs now is confirmation. But again, you can see the same thing uh, happening with Facebook, uh, Amazon. So Amazon never triggered to the downside. But if you guys notice Amazon's chart for the last, probably for the last month, right? It just can't get, get out of its own way. We finally saw a bottom, in my opinion, on Friday on Amazon. Okay, now again, my opinion means absolutely nothing. It could confirm back down to the downside and go to zero. You get my point. Um, but what I started seeing on Friday were two things. Number one, we have Black Friday coming up, right? Everybody is making bets ahead of time on Amazon. You have Cyber Monday coming. So again, who's going to benefit the most from it? It's obviously Amazon, right? What we started seeing on Friday was some pretty big bets in the options market. There was over $2 million. Uh, it's probably more than that, but there was over $2 million worth of bets um, I believe it was the December, I believe it was the December 18, 1850s. I believe it was the 1850s. Actually, if I go on my, hold on, if I go on my Twitter account, um, Amazon. Yeah. So there was over, it was over $2 million. So there was over $2 million uh, bet on the, actually, it was, excuse me, it was the February. Okay. It was the February uh, 1840 calls. Okay. It was 1840 calls. So they started, uh, they started, you know, really betting. They started really betting on Amazon, uh, towards the bottom of the channel. Okay. Towards the bottom of the channel. And what I liked, what I saw, uh, what I liked, what I saw about Amazon, it really firmed up. Okay. It really firmed up to the end of the week. The problem is there's really, there's not really a great entry. Okay. You can make a case that, you know, if it starts reclaiming, 1749, 1750, right? But there's more supply, 1753, 1755. If it reclaims 1755, 56, then, you know, there's there's more areas here, 1762 can get to 65. So you can see, if you're entering Amazon this week, right, uh, you're going to need a really big gap up to succeed because again, there's no such things as guarantees anything. And if you, again, if you believe in the theory of stocks go from supply to supply, demand to demand, you could see, 18, 1750, 1753, then gets rejected. 1758, then gets rejected. 1762, maybe goes to 1765, and gets rejected. So there's no clean pocket. This is the only stock out there on all the beta names that is not a clean pocket. So, but again, those 1840 calls came in over $2 million worth of bets. And I'm probably, uh, I'm probably, probably right in saying this. It wasn't mom and pop uh, sitting on their porch from in Wichita, Kansas, betting $2 million on Amazon. And again, when you see that type of price action, or at least that type of money flow, um, they are probably not uncertain of which way uh, the trade is going to go. Uh, so that was that. Uh, Roku uh, obviously never got down to the 154 level. Uh, Alibaba started to build. Um, Alibaba started to build off the 8620. Uh, well, you know, went to like 87. Again, not a big move on uh, Alibaba. Again, you can actually you can just tell how tight these channels are. That's why the whole Thing, the word chop comes into play. And that's my whole point. Uh, we just talked about for the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, Google 1315 needs to build. Here's the Google chart, right? Here's the Google chart. Again, it just couldn't get above it, right? Couldn't get above it. And now you see a very specific channel. You have 1350 to the upside, and now you have 1288 to the downside. Something has to give. And again, if the market pulls, it, you, again, you could clearly see how clean these pockets are to the downside. A lot, of, a lot of congestion to the upside, a lot of clean moves to the downside. So again, 17, you know, right? 1288 to 1256, right? 1315 to 1332. Again, you don't need to guess anymore. Here's your top channel. Here's your bottom channel. One of these things need to uh, confirm. Uh, Boeing, right? Boeing, you know, it's a, it's a bitch of a stock to trade, but you know, when this thing gets going, this thing gets going, it finally put in a new base of 13, uh, 371, right? So here is Boeing, right? It finally put in a base of 1371, uh, excuse me, 371. It really should go, you know, it really, really should go and test this. The next big area here is 376 for a possible move to 380. 
But this stock is just literally all over the place. The, the only good thing about the bull case is as long as it stays above 365, you're good. Once it starts closing below 365, you got a problem. Uh, but again, first close over 360, uh, 371. Again, if this is your thing, this is your thing. It's just too hard of a trader, at least for me. Uh, Square didn't do anything. Uh, Shop didn't do anything, just never, never confirmed. Uh, Disney, Disney finally exploded. Uh, if you have little girls or even little boys, uh, my daughter is going to see at some point tonight uh, Frozen. Uh, Disney, again, Disney, here was the sneaky pivot on entry, right? Here was the sneaky pivot. We talked about this 47, uh, 4760 area, and it exploded. You know, the Frozen Part 2 is supposed to be good, right? It's supposed to be good. Let it go, right? Let it go. Let it go, right? So they let it, they let it go. Uh, stock went to 49 and a half. Big, big move on Disney. Uh, ULTI is still like to the downside, never confirmed. Uh, NVIDIA. You know, NVIDIA needs a new base. NVIDIA needs a new base that never got there. Uh, NET was from uh, the watch list. Uh, NET was from the watch list, uh, 1750, 1760. Uh, you know, ran up, you know, ran up to about the 18 bucks. I still like it on a reclaim to 18. You can see the daily chart there. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Uh, Roku. Roku was good. Roku was good. Uh, so I traded Roku. To, uh, I traded Roku on Friday, uh, but down uh, from the short side and to the long side. Here's the first one. Again, the reason I say pro traders when the stock is coming off a top, it's going to be it's going to be whippy. There's certain trades that are just not for everybody. So I started shorting Roku. Uh, pretty good aggressive flush. Went down to like 154 and change. I covered two thirds. Once they held that 154 again, I covered two thirds. The rest broke even, which is good. Again, you always want to use break even as your stops. That's your runner. Uh, so that was good. Obviously, take on the way down. Uh, Disney take on the way up. Uh, so Tesla had some issues, right? Tesla had some issues. Uh, 3470, 35. It just really couldn't. It really couldn't get that big momentum. Okay, they try to get it up a couple of times. Um, they they got it above 334, 70, 335 numerous times. Traded it to like 35, 60s. A lot of sellers there. And I kind of you know I want to watch it on both sides on Monday. But there's a lot of sellers there. Again, 154 and Roku continues to be the huge number going forward to the downside. But here is the pivot, right? Here is the pivot to the upside, which was a really nice scalp towards the end of the day. Uh, 158, uh, 80, uh, 159 needs to build. Again, towards the end of the day, you're just looking for cash flow. Uh, so here was the pivot towards the end of the day. Uh, this was actually a great call by, uh, I think it was Philip in the room. Uh, I wasn't even watching this until he called it out. And he said, you know, there's a sneaky pivot there. So we got long right here. You know, nice scalp here. It went from the 5870s all the way up to the 5970s. Again, a dollar move in the afternoon is very, very rare, especially contracting channels. So thank you very much again. I uh, appreciate Philip for the color there. So good job there. So again, it was a nice move to the downside, right? So here was the pivot. Here was the pivot to the downside, the 5570s, right to the rising support. And here was a sneaky pivot to the upside. Again, what's great about pivots is you could trade these stocks uh, to the long side, to the short side. There is no bias. We're just waiting for confirmation and a sentiment uh, to confirm. Um, Roku again takes sales. Here comes the 160s, which kind of never got there. Um, here was a pivot towards the end of the day uh, on Tesla. Not a big pivot. It will only work for like a dollar and change. But uh, Tesla, 333 support. If it builds, can flush. Uh, again, here was Tesla. Okay, you don't need to. You, you, we're not shorting the bottoms and, the t and buying the tops. We're looking for the meat, right? That's what she said. Um, right? So here was the candle right over here, uh, 333. Uh, that was a sneaky pivot. And again, went down to like 331 and change, 331.80s. Again, is it the biggest trade in the world? No, but again, the afternoons, the same trade that you'll get in the mornings for two, three, four dollars $4 measure potential, you'll probably get them for 50 cents to a dollar in the afternoon. So again, you have to kind of curb your expectations for the afternoon. But a 50 cents a dollar move for just for cash flow uh, towards the afternoon, especially towards the end of the week on Friday, uh, is, uh, is pretty good. It's actually pretty good, again, for anybody who trades uh, in the afternoon. So again, short week, okay, short week, lighter volume. I think we're going to get some value, okay? I think Netflix is still good. I, I'm waiting for Facebook. Uh, to confirm, I can't believe I'm even saying that, but I am. Um, I'm watching Tesla both sides again. Look, can Tesla keep going lower? Of course it could. Look at the check. Look at the channel here, right? Of course it could go lower. Again, if it reclaims the top of the channel, it's going to go higher. If it confirms the bottom of the channel, it's going to go lower. So there will be value there. But again, the most important thing, guys, just stay patient. You don't need to trade every day. For all you option players, you guys need channels to expand. Okay. 
you can't trade in a contracting cycle. So if you're an options trader, where's your big, biggest value? Towards the end of the week, right? Because that's where the biggest bets for speculation, especially the weeklies, will get put on the line, right? So you, you have a much better potential to make money on expanding cycles on Thursday and Friday than you do Tuesday and Wednesday because that's the middle of the week. So again, you don't need to trade every day, okay? Just wait for your opportunities, understand your measure potential, and once it confirms, that's where you strike with extreme prejudice. Guys, have an awesome week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I love you all. God bless, and I'll see you on the field on Monday. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.